Hello everybody and we're live. Welcome to day 11 of Anvico 2022. Right, it's been 10 days, um, 20 stars earned so far. Hasn't been too hard, hasn't been too hard, but the puzzles have been really, really nice, really like them so far. So I'm excited to see what um, day 11 has in store for us today. So let me just go into my coding environment as I always do. Oh, and I, as always, I have my solutions linked in the GitHub in the description down below um, if you're interested in looking at them. Right, yeah, I think I have my files all there. Yep, right, so let's get ready to begin. Get my input file ready. Okay, and day 11, out of code 2022. I'll see you after the time lapse. Right, that's part one done. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what Eric's up to today. That was just weird. <laughs> Monkeys and all of that stuff. That was really good. Oh, man, the puzzles this this year are really fun. Um. Anyway, I'll copy over my files and I'll see you after the part two time lapse. Bye. Right, that's part two done. I was pretty happy with the part two. <laughs> yeah, that was quite fun. <coughs> you see, I'm still a bit sick, so bear with me. Um, but anyway, yeah, that is day 11 done. Done and dusted. Right, let's look at the puzzle itself. But yeah, I, I really like that. that. That was great. Um, to be honest, I more love the monkey aspect of it <laughs> than the actual puzzle. Um, but come on. Although to be fair, we have been missing like a full game emulation puzzle this year. So it's nice to see Eric chuck one in um, quite early on actually, day 11. Usually they come quite later um, into the year. At least they have in the past few years. Anyway. Day 11. Monkey in the middle. <laughs> As you finally start making your way upriver, you realise your pack is much lighter than you remember. Just then, one of the items from your pack goes flying overhead. Monkeys are playing keep away with your missing things. Uh, pig in the middle, essentially. <laughs> um, I guess Eric wanted some alliteration, so it's monkey in the middle. Um, yeah. Monkeys are playing keep away with your missing things. <laughs> dear, oh dear. 
To get your stuff back, you need to be able to predict where the monkeys will throw your items. After some careful observation, you realise the monkeys operate based on how worried you are about each item. You take some notes to puzzle input on the items each monkey currently has, how worried you are about those items, and how the monkey makes decisions based on your worry levels. Kind of weird how you just makes your puzzle input every day is just a really weird thing. Like it's either just some random set of instructions you happen to have, or in this case, the, mon the notes you've managed to take. And like, these are a lot of notes to take. Um, oh well. Each monkey has several attributes. Starting items list your worry level for each item the monkey is currently holding in the order they will be inspected. Operation shows how your worry level changes as the monkey inspects an item. Um, an operation like new equals all times 5 means that your worry level after the monkey inspected the item is 5 times whatever your worry level was before inspection. Test shows how the monkey uses your worry level to decide where to throw the item next. If true, shows what happens when, with an item if the test was true. If false, shows what happens with an item if the test was false. After each monkey inspects an item, but before it tests your worry level, your relief, your relief that the monkey's inspection didn't damage the item causes your worry level to be divided by 3 and rounded down to the nearest integer. The monkeys take turns inspecting and throwing items. On a single monkey's turn, it inspects and throws all of the items it is holding one at a time and in the order listed. Monkey 0 goes first, then monkey 1, and so on until each monkey has had one turn. The process of each monkey taking a single turn is called a round. When a monkey throws an item to another monkey, the item goes on the end of the recipient monkey's list. A monkey that starts the round with no items could end up inspecting and throwing many items by the time it comes around. If a monkey is holding no items at the start of its turn, its turn ends. Um, long example again. The past few days I've just had a really long example, which makes scrolling through this entire thing a pain. <laughs> um, more examples, blah blah, even more examples. Chasing all of the monkeys at once is impossible. You're going to have to focus on the two most active monkeys if you want any hope of getting your stuff back. Count the total number of times each monkey inspects items over 20 rounds. Um, the level of monkey business in this situation can be found by multiplying these together. So the question, figure out which monkeys to chase by counting how many items they inspect over 20 rounds. What is the level of monkey business after 20 rounds of stuff slinging simian shenanigans? <laughs> There's actually no need, Eric. Of all of this random tongue twister alliteration. <laughs> well, well, that's a bit of humour and fun into this pub pub problem. I've also said the word monkey far too many times than I would have liked in the past two minutes. I've actually never said the word monkey that, that many times. But anyway, um, so I did, obviously, I read this. I got utterly bamboozled by this, but discarded it because it's obviously just random stuff that didn't mean anything. Um, and then, to be honest, I didn't really skim read it. I kind of, I did skim read it. But I kind of read it properly, like I read all of this properly. Um, I obviously noticed my input was really weird when I opened it as well. So I just kept it open because, I don't know, on days where I find my input a bit weird, I just keep it open because I tend to need to refer back to it. Um, but yeah, that was uh, what I did. Um, yeah, I kind of just like skimmed all of this stuff. The bolded words, like, thank you, Eric. Today's bolded words and phrases are spot on. Like. They are incredibly useful. How red you are, but you should item, right level, divided by three, what is around, on the end. All of these words are, that are bolded are spot on. Because it also meant that I could relatively quickly skip the problem. I wasn't the fastest, but I was quite fast, I think. Um, and thanks to these bolded words, skim reading was so, so much easier. And like, I could draw connections, um, kind of guess parts of the puzzle, and be pretty happy with my guess. Um, for example, like, the item goes on to the end. If I skim read, I'll have no clue where the item goes. I'll just assume it went on to the end. Because it's got bolded here, I knew it went on to the end, which is great. Right then, yeah, the example. The example. In this problem, the example was key. Because the example was like the thing. The example is what I used to follow through my logic. Um, both times, actually. Um, you know, because even if you don't fully understand the question, you should get the rough gist of it and a rough idea of what you're meant to do. The example is key. The example is literally God. It's the Bible. It's. It's what you're meant to be doing, and it's right there. And thank you, Eric, for today's example. It's long, but it's really, really verbose. It tells you everything you need to know, and in the order, and it's great. Um, so yeah, this example, love it. I think that's all I had to say. Yeah, just skim read this bit as well, because um, obviously I guess that bit's the actual question um, of what you, what numbers you need. Right, so let's go on to look at my solution. Yeah, not actually too long today. I think it's just a bit more complicated. Um, and like, input passing. Today's input passing is where everyone would have taken the most time. It's definitely the hardest bit. 
Um, but again, I love input passing. Because as far as I'm concerned, like input passing is great. It's just looking at your input, looking at the information you want to extract, and then just thinking to yourself, okay, what's the correct logic? What's the patterns I see that can allow me to extract the information? That allow me to extract the information. Um, and once you spot those patterns, it's just a matter of implementing them. And I mean, you'll probably see what I mean, because I will explain my, my passing in this case. Right, so here on my code, I just load in the input. Um, I split it on every double line, just because, you know, every monkey has its own double line separated between each other. Um, then, yeah, these are just my dictionaries that essentially keep track of all the different values I need to know. So the, um, the key in each of these dictionaries is the monkey number, so like this. Um, and then the, the value is going to be whatever information I need. So T has the, the, a list of these numbers, the starting items, or just the items. O is a dictionary that contains the actual operation. Um, P is what contains like this divisible thing. And then Q is just a tuple with that and that. And, like that's all the information I need from each of these like paragraphs, I guess. Um, and so that's all I'm extracting, extracting from the input. And so I chuck into those dictionaries. Um, so this is where I pass my input and do everything I need to do. Um, so I go through every line in the input, well, every like monkey in the input, because I remember I spit it on these. So I go through every one of these in the input, and I split that up into its own lines because you know each line has its own piece of critical information. So now at this point, I have a list of each of these lines, right? And then I need to find out the monkey number just because that's pivotal. It's what the key is in each of my dictionaries. Um, again, that's pretty easy. Just take the first line, second to last digit, and int it. Again, having your input open is really critical for this because, to be honest, everyone's code for this, this stage can be really jammy and really dodgy and really weird and really bad. Like, really poor programming practices. Um, but, you know, it's all about getting the right solution, getting it really fast and getting it in a really hacky way. Because if it's fast and it works, it works. That's the engineering method. If it works, it works. Um, no one cares how good it is. Um, so yeah, looking at my input, I only have like monkeys up to single digits, right? Um, so like I knew this would work if I just take the minus two um, character, because I only got single digits. Obviously there was probably a more elegant way to do this, you could probably do it with regex, but I knew this worked, so I looked at my input, and like that's all I needed to do. Really, really quick to code. Right, and then I move on to try and getting these um, starting items list ready. So again, really jammy way of doing this. But I take I take this line, I split it on the colon and the space, which means I now have this, is this and this as two items in my list. Um, and then for every thing, and then I look at this one. I look at the side of the list, so the first item, like index one, it's like a second item, and then I split that on every comma space. It's like if you look down here, each of the numbers is separated by a comma space. That's why I split it on a comma space. And then for every one of those, I turn this string into an integer of the number, and then just add that to the, to the starting items of the respective thing, the respective monkey. And that's where default that came in handy because, um, you know, I could just append it as opposed to having to bother initialize a list for every single monkey. Um, yeah, that's what default that was up here for. Um, and then yeah, for O, what is O? O is this operation. So again, I just, I won't go through every single way I extracted these, because um, you know there are three more. I'm not going to go through all of them. But I, I just extract. But oh, I just extract the last two like things. Um, yeah, I literally just extract it as a, like a, a string. Like this is the string. For p, p is the um, the divisible thing. So I just extract like the last word of this line and turn it into an integer. Oops, not that line. This line. <laughs> and then q, q is just my tuple. And it's a tuple tailing with the first item being this one and the second item being this one. Um, so I just extract the exact monkey number I need here. And again, because monkey number is only one digit long, I can just use um, negative one to, to find this character. Yeah, so I'm left with these um, four dictionaries with all the information I need to know. If you want to play around with my code, again, check the description down below for the GitHub link. You can like see exactly what I did. I spilled some food. I think I'm going to clean that up now, and I'll see you after I clean that up. <laughs>
Right, I'm back. Sorry about that. I've cleaned up most of the food I just spilled. Um, yeah, where was I? Yeah, you can play around with my code in the description down below if you want to see what all these dictionaries do actually contain. But yeah, that's a quick rundown. Um, yeah, one thing you probably saw me do in the first time lapse is um, I had an error when I actually finished writing my code because I was doing like times old, but old is not a number. Um, and so, like, a really janky way to uh, solve that is by actually changing the input. Um, so, you see here on line 45. Um, Hopefully my face isn't blocking that, so let me move that down. Line 45 here. Um, this used to say times by all like that, right? But I just really jankily fixed it by doing that. Because um, all times all is just the same as taking it to the power of two, so right? that's what I wrote there. Um, and that way I kind of eliminated the use of variables and just replaced it with numbers. Really, really janky way. But I mean, it worked, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Again, like... It made passing everything so much easier because everything's basically the same, right? And if it's not the same, I'm going to go into my input file and change it to make it the same. <laughs> um, and like this input file is pretty short, actually. So it's not too hard to change everything you need to change. Right, so now for the actual code. Let me scroll down a bit. Um, this is like running each round. Um, and I guess for every item... I mean, I'm not going to go through this. I just simulate exactly what it says. Um, and the way I did that, again, is just by looking at this. I literally didn't even read this at all um, whilst I was coding this. I just looked at this example and hard coded, like, like I just coded like what these five lines, right? Because that's all I asked you to do. And like, you can just scroll down through this and see there's a consistency. Like, okay, they all divide by three. Okay. They all do the same idea. So I'm gonna code that idea. And just going, going through this example on the left, um, line by line, you kind of get all of these answers. Um, C, I'm just, here's like the final list, by the way, it's the final dictionary. So C is a dictionary with each monkey as the key and each monkey's item number as a value, right? So if every time they handle an item, their number increases by one for their monkey business activity thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this was pretty neat as well, line 36. This was this line, right? Um, it's where you change the worry level depending on the input, what the input said, this operation. And because I literally just stored this bit as a string, I'm just going to use eval, right? I'm just going to use an f string, use eval, and then just evaluate it as a string, because it is a string. So, you know, th this bit's a string, and then this bit I kind of just turn a into a string. And I'll just eval evaluate that. And then, yeah. And then, depending on whether it classifies values, I do this or that, blah, blah, blah. Again, not going to explain all of this. And then, right after you've gone through an entire monkey, which is right after this for loop, you then, um, you then like clear the list, right? Because the monkey's gone through every item in the list, and therefore this list should be empty. Had a bit of issues with this, like chuck chucking it there, some basic logic errors, but fixed that nice and easily. So now I've got my list, my, I've got my comment dictionary called C, um, and that's basically got all my answer, right? So I just need to take all the values um, and sort them, um, and so now I've got a sorted list of all the monkey activity values. And then I just have to multiply the greatest two together. And since the list is sorted, that's just the last item in the list multiplied by the second last item in the list. And that gives me the answer, which is fantastic. Hopefully I didn't change my code by doing that. Oops. Um, right, yeah. is that my answer? <laughs> Bear with me. Yeah, okay, good, my code's the same. I'll just clear my terminal because I feel like my face is gonna be blocking this in the stream. <laughs> um, so yeah. Anyway, that's part one done. Let's move on to part two. Wherever this is in this long page of scrolls. Part two. You're worried you might not ever get your items back. So worried, in fact, that your relief that a monkey's inspection didn't damage an item long causes your worry level to be divided by three. Unfortunately, that relief was all that was keeping your worry levels from reaching ridiculous levels. So you'll need to find another way to keep your worries level manageable. At this rate, you might be putting up with these monkeys for a very long time, possibly 10,000 rounds. With these new rules, you can still figure out the monkey business up to 10,000 rounds, blah blah blah, example. Worry levels are no longer divided by 3 after each item is inspected. You'll need to find another way to keep your worry levels manageable. Starting again from the initial state in your puzzle input, what is the level of monkey business after 10,000 rounds? Yeah, to be honest, I read this paragraph, pretty short, the actual question. And like, you could figure out like what it meant, right? Because after reading the first problem, you got a very strong idea that the reason 
that like the second problem is just going to be the first one but bigger, right? Because the first one had all sorts of limits with 20 rounds only divided by three. And so like in my brain when I was reading the first one, I was like, okay, the second one is going to be something about simulating this on a much larger scale. Um, and I think that's kind of obvious as a classic, classic Eric move. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't say this is unexpected. And because I also expected that actually, I didn't really have to read the rest of the puzzle problem statement. Um, it's just that I needed to ensure I was right because, you know, I, just, I don't want to be wrong. And like, the problem statement was actually quite short. It's only this. So I thought, I might as well spend like the extra 15 seconds reading it just to ensure I know I'm correct. And yeah, reading it didn't really provide anything useful. Um, just kind of reiterated or consolidated the idea that I'm now simulating a lot more rounds and I'm now not dividing by three. Um, I think this bit was pretty key though. You'll need to find another way to keep your worry levels manageable. That's Eric's way of telling you, right, now it's in your hands to kind of find a really smart way um, to solve this problem and simulate it despite it being massive. But yeah, I think this problem statement, the second part, was quite easy to understand, quite easy to follow and really expected. So not much to say there. Um, let's go to my solution. Even probably a bit more. Um, yeah. So again, most of us the same idea as before. And um, to solve this, to be honest, what I did is, I mean, I knew what I had to do, right? Like it, they tell you what you have to do. Because the only thing keeping you keeping this manageable in um, part one was this divisible by three um, here, divide by three. And so you essentially needed to find a replacement to that, and that's literally it. Just find a replacement to it. Um, and um, you, you can see it in my code, right? Like here, I literally commented out that line because that's the line we're trying to replace. And I'll just replace it with this line. And I'll tell you what that line actually does. Um, but to figure out what that line does, just looking at my input, again, I think it was really dodgy, hacky ways to figure it out. Just looking at my input. And then I think it was pretty obvious that you... Uh, to be honest, I'm not great at maths, so this, explaining this might be a bit tough. Um, and yeah, I'll, if I make a bonus video today, I'll probably find like a proper math explanation for it. But... Um, what I wanted to say is that if you're testing if something is divisible by something and each monkey is doing that, if you find the lowest common multiple of all of these numbers, then you can kind of take that answer and instead of dividing um, on this word, instead of defining your worry level by three, you can divide it by the lowest common multiple of all of these divisible number things right like it's pretty hard to explain i think i don't know pause the video now and just think about it for a minute or two i think that's what made sense to me in the moment and it just does make sense right again i'm not great at explaining this um or articulating my idea but that's 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 the idea <laughs> to be honest i thought of this pretty fast i wasn't sure if i was correct again i wasn't sure if i was really true but i thought worth a try and you know looking at these numbers you recognize they're all prime probably prime for a reason right like they're all different primes as well so clearly, to find the lowest common multiple, you do just need to multiply them all together. Um, again, that's just how primes work. Like the only lowest common multiple they have is multiplying them all together. And so that's what I did on this line. Um, I mean, I could have just done this in a calculator. I just did it on Python because I already had Python. So I just take, took all of the divisible by x numbers, multiply them all together. Um, again, they are just all like primes, like the first, I don't know, eight primes they are. Uh, yeah, I think that's the first eight primes. Multiply them all together. Um, when I run the code, I just ran the code. It printed out the answer of them all multiplied together. So I copied that, chucked that number into the code as like kind of dividing A by that number, right? Because, okay, I'll try to explain this. Let's say I had this number as my worry level, like this exact number. If I divide that number by any of any of these monkeys like divisible values then I'm going to get zero because that's the lowest common multiple of all of these values right so it has to be zero that's just maths um, and so I know I can kind of use that number as a repeating idea if that makes sense like a repeating factor um, and so if I just take the worry level and mod it by that number to get the remainder of the worry level divided by that number then I'm always going to like eliminate a lot of the things because if my number ever gets too large, like larger than whatever this is, which is 10 almost 10 million, 
um, I can just like reduce it down by just getting the remainder of that divided by that number. Um, and it's effectively the same thing because all we really want in this is to know if it's divisible or not. Like not how much it's divisible by, just if it's divisible or not. And therefore we only really need to keep track of the remainder when it's divided by that number. That's essentially what divisible means. We only care about the remainder. And that's why I can just do this, right? Because this number kind of accounts for every single monkey and I'm keeping track of only the remainder because I don't care about the rest. I don't care about how many times this number goes into that. I only care about the remainder when the worry level is divided by the number. And that's what I kind of account for here. Hopefully that made sense. If not, I guess, I don't know. Just think about it a bit more. Um, look at your own puzzle input. I assume it follows the same pattern of primes. Um, I don't know. But that's the idea um, I need to do. And that's really the only thing. Like this part two was really just an algorithmic thing. Cause like I only did this line, which is in reality just the maths. Like I could have done it on a calculator. And then the only line I actually changed was replacing this one with this. So yeah, really just algorithmic part two. Um, a really fun one, yeah, because I like those ones where you kind of have to make your own algorithm, right? It's not just copy-pasting a predefined algorithm. And it's also a really, really short, simple, sweet algorithm, like one line, <laughs> one, two lines, in my case. Um, and yeah, it's about thinking about that algorithm, finding the best one, um, and yeah, just implementing it. Looking at your input, looking at the question, thinking what could work. And if it, if it seems like it could work, try it out. And yeah, so I ran that. I was getting a bit worried because you see it does take a few seconds to run here, but it eventually ran. Bef thankfully, before I control scene like gave up the process, I was about to do that and just quit it. Um, thankfully, I didn't. I mean, this answer looked massive though, so I was really unsure. I probably saw a bit of hesitation in the video. Um, but, you know, I, I visually compared it to this number, I was like, this number is also really massive. Probably has as many digits as this one, so it's probably like roughly right. Might as well try it. I was actually really surprised that it was right. Um, but anyway, I'm really happy with that. Um, that was I went to code 2022, day 11, done. So I've got another two stars, lovely, bringing me up to 22. Epic, yeah, awesome day. Let's just look at the calendar. Yeah, just continuing to progress down the forest. Um, and I'm interested to see what all of this grey stuff is going to turn into later on. I'm sure it can't just all be forest. Maybe like Christmassy lights on the forest. I don't know. Because I mean, last year, he added Christmas lights to the calendar. Like these moving lighty things, glowy things. Maybe he does the same to the trees in the forest. I don't know. Leaderboard. Yeah, I mean, this is staying pretty similar. What's the lowest? 300 points. Yeah. Interesting. Day 11. Fast guy with 6 minutes. Pretty fast, actually, like, yeah, pretty fast. So, 13, that's much slower than I would have thought, like, much slower. That's a seven minute difference. I don't know how. Oh well, part two, eight minutes. It says the same guy. <laughs> Probably is, can't I? No, it isn't. I mean, he's pretty similar. Mr. Philip. He dropped down a little. Yeah, but he must have thought of the algorithm pretty fast then, um, for part two. Yeah, what's that, like, a minute? <laughs> That's actually really impressive. A minute, yeah. Because you've got to read the problem and then think of the algorithm, so props to him. And then the slowest part two was 18 minutes. Oh, and it's anonymous again from my school leaderboard. Lovely, I nice to see him make another appearance. Getting 9 points, I think, 10 points. Anyway, well done to him. But yeah, let's check out my school leaderboard. Ooh, yeah, lots of people have done all of them so far, all 22 stars, which is really awesome to see. Yeah, I think the great thing about it being more accessible this year is that you see more people programming, people get into programming, that's always awesome to see. Um, yeah, same right idea for here. Anonymous stealing the win from everyone else. Danish and Avnaf keep battling for second and third places. And yeah, yeah, I mean, Anonymous Delta time was pretty fast. That's probably how he made part two leaderboard, yeah. It took a bit longer for part one, but Delta Time was really good. <laughs> and you just get the rest, like Dr. Danish, really slow compared to Anonymous. And I'm right behind him. But I think 
Yeah, I've been have undercut Dr. Danish for part two. Wow, yeah. These delta times though, they vary drastically. I don't know, like, I assume they're just dependent on how fast you can think of the, like, the logic of magic to solve the problem. And again, I just think the reason that I was so fast is just because I have a big focus on my input. I mean, I think today is one of the days where you need to, like, look at your inputs more than you look at the question. Um, I think it's because I did that that I was pretty good. Yeah, focus on the inputs. I learned that from, like, um, I think it was, like, day three last year. No, day three two years ago. Um, yeah, and also last year it was, like, day 22 or something. Where looking at the input, which is so... Made your, made your life so much easier. Day 23, last year. Looking at the input was like the solution. <laughs> um, so I mean, since then I've always been looking at the input a lot because so much can be learned from looking at the input. But anyway, stats. Yeah, these just keep climbing up. Not many people have done today. I guess it is Sunday, people are chilling. Um, and because like, it wasn't super easy, people are like, if this isn't easy, I'm just gonna chill today. Fair enough though. Um, but yeah, so many people doing it this year. It's, it's awesome, it's great to see that. But anyway, that's day 11 of AOC 2022 done. Hopefully you enjoyed that, I loved the puzzle. Um, I'm not sure if it competes with my favorite puzzle, day seven. I think it's right behind that. I just love the recursion aspect of day seven because recursion is so satisfying when it works because it doesn't make any sense, but it works. And that's why I love recursion. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm putting this day right, right behind day seven. But I think that was really good. Love the monkeys, love the storyline. Um, really entertaining, love the logic, love the algorithms. Um, awesome. Hopefully you managed to do that at some point today. Um, hopefully you enjoyed my video, hopefully you enjoyed my solution. As always, you can check out the solution, you can copy it, fork it, whatever you want. Um, and yeah, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you tomorrow for day 12.